Hi everyone. All right, I hope you are doing well with your dish rags. I finished mine. Um, I think I ended up, here's the stitch, here's a real close up of the stitch. I think I ended up doing 21 rows to make it, I don't know, I feel like that's pretty square. <clears throat> um, I'm on my last stitch here um, that I just kind of wanted to show you um, how you bind off or how you just tie off. This, of course, my, I was on a single crochet here. And so we're just gonna put one last double crochet in. And then in order to, to tie off your project, you just take your little scissor here and you, it doesn't need to be a very long tail. Um, I just kind of hold it in my hand and cut right below it. So, you know, four, four inches or so. And then you're just gonna, you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull it through all the way and then just pull tight. So you're, you're not here and you're not at the other end. It's the same. So now your rag is officially done and we can move on to putting the border on. So I have chose a contrasting blue, so the yellow and the blue. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to um, add, or the way that I add, um, a new colored yarn for a border and um, and then how to just kind of weave in those ends so that they're they're not going to fall out after you've thrown it through the wash a few times. So I'll meet you back here and we'll start that. Okay, so the easiest way I can show you to add add a color in, or um, like I said, the the rag is fine the way it is. You can you can use it the way it is. Just go ahead and weave in your ends. Um, make sure you weave it in one way and then pull it back another way so that they're really locked in there. Um, right now what we're going to do is we're going to just create a single crochet border in, an, in a contrasting color and crochet right over um, our tails of our previous, um, previous color. So um, I just pick a spot, um, preferably one where I don't have to, where all I have to do is slip stitch into it to finish. So I'm just going to choose a spot um, on, my, on my rag at, on one of the edges. To put my needle into my hook. Um, I then just pinch it and pull this through till I get one, okay, you want to have your, your yarn literally just threaded through one of the stitches. And then to really make sure that my yarn isn't going to move, I'm also going to crochet in the tails, but I'm, I just am a little, I would hate to ever give something away and it, <laughs> started falling apart. So I'm kind of adamant about just tying it in place. So some people don't do it that way. Some people um, omit this step and they just start with this, which is simply they pull a loop through their first stitch and um, chain up one to begin. And then they would begin their border. And so it's completely up to you. I just know that that's the way I like to do mine because I certainly just, I just don't want to ever see that end come out and somebody yank on it and whoop, there goes your border. So um, essentially now all you're going to do is you're going to create single crochets all the way around. So we're just going to yarn over and pull through two. Uh, one caveat here. <clears throat> so I am, I am crocheting over any tails that I have. This is not something you have to do. You can certainly weave them in if it's too, if it's too tedious or it's just getting in the way and it's, it's, it's not working for you. You can move this out of the way and you can do this and you can tie your, or you can weave your ends in later. For me, because I'm doing it, I'm moving right along. I just prefer to just get it all done. So um, again, go to your next chain, just like you're, just like you were performing. You're going to put your hook in, crochet, or yarn over and then pull through your two loops. So you're going to do a single crochet all the way. I apologize, my work stations are exceptionally loud. Um, all the way around the entire cloth. And Essentially, when you want to add a border, whether it be the yellow, you could have continued with this goldish yellow color, or if you wanted to start a new color for a contrasting border. Um, the one thing I will say is um, 
most of them start with single crochets as kind of like their foundation to begin a new color. Um, so you kind of are building off of that. Now you could just start with your one color of single crochets and move on and that could be your border or you could then um, go on and add a couple additional to make it a little bit of a thicker, more predominant border. Um, that's all up to you. But uh, for tutorial's sake, I'm just going to get you through how to turn a corner and get a uh, work a rough edge and then I'm going to leave it to you. So here we're at the corner. So I started just in a in a in a in a nice clean spot where I wanted to begin my border. Got over to this corner here and essentially all you're going to do is um, you're going to you're going to single crochet into your corner and then you're going to turn the corner. So you need a little bit of a Need a little bit of wiggle room there so you're just going to chain one like that right so that was my single crochet in the stitch i'm going to chain one which is kind of rolling me around the corner and then i can go back in and i can single crochet in that same hole in that same spot that i was just in um that will get you kind of around the corner you can kind of see it gives you a little bit of room to move it around and, and once you add, start if you want to add on to it it just it just makes things a lot cleaner so um again here's my yellow tail so i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to find what is best so the hardest part of um, borders is always this rough edge because up top and up bottom you always have definitive chains on the sides you have kind of a, a hot mess um, you have a hodgepodge. Some, sometimes it's just a single crochet and it's really easy, but in this case we did doubles with singles. So we have a double crochet here, which we know we want to probably put a chain in there for a border, or a single crochet in there for a border. And then we have just a really small area right here that's going to need one. We have a large, we're going to probably look for a small, and we're kind of going to go in that fashion um, to get all of the single crochets around the rough border edge. So um, that's something to keep in mind. It's frustrating at first, I'm not going to lie. I remember when I first was doing it and um, you know, I would go back and count my stitches and I'd be like, oh, okay, I put 26 in and then I'd go over here and I'm like, why do I only have like 19? <laughs> and so I would either try to make more over here or I would try go and tear it out and I would try and space these a little bit farther out. So you kind of want to be conscientious that whatever you're putting over here you have to you have to duplicate over here because you don't want to have this border really you know full and then have this one really sparse so uh, so let me just proceed with this here so we have one single crochet here and again I'm going over the yellow yarn it doesn't have to be real taut or anything but just so that you get your you get all your working yarn over it um, single crochet and I'm gonna go in the bigger the bigger spot that's available now this one's kind of a I mean it's it's a guessing game at this point like I said so we were in a larger spot I'm kind of just gonna um, I'm gonna kind of just go under these two that looks to be like part of a chain put another single crochet in there um, and just kind of gauge it you know it's eyeballing it honestly I can't I, I, there is no real law. I mean, if somebody can find a better YouTube on how to how to make a stitch on a on a rough edge like this, that would be great. But I've looked around and I just figured this is the way it works for me, and it's worked pretty darn good. So, um, so what I would do is I would continue that process all the way down. Once I get to this corner again, we're gonna single crochet, chain one, single crochet, all in the same. In the same area right we're gonna do it right in the same spot so chain one or single crochet chain one single crochet then we can move on to single crocheting all of these um, I'll meet you back here to go over um, this corner with another rough edge and then we'll get to the end of here where I'm going to show you how to just do a slip stitch and uh, you can either tie it off or you can opt to go on and make a secondary row for your border. Okay, I wanted to make a notation on the bottom side of your rag. It looks a little bit different um, than the top, which is a nice 
clean V, right, because you have a nice stitch, whether it was single or double, but at the bottom where you began, you, you're essentially kind of left with a half a chain um, because you used this side of it for, um, for these stitches. So you really are kind of only left with this little, it's very much a remnant um, of the chain. So you kind of just do your best um, determining where those stitches are. You can indeed see where um, a double versus a single went. Um, and if you're ever um, unclear of, uh, you know, like, oh, was that too many? Was that, was that not enough? You can always count however many stitches you have up here, which I believe I have 26. And then you can count your stitches down here. And if you are close within one or two, or, you know, maybe you're right on, you know that you've, you've hit the appropriate spots that you should have been in. Um, after a while, it just becomes second nature. You're just like, oh, yeah, I know it goes there, it goes there, it goes there. Um, it feels like you're something you're filling in. So um, I wanted to identify that for you just so that you're not lost on that bottom edge. Um, I'm getting to this corner now here again where I'm going to insert and do one single with a chain one and another single crochet to turn the corner. And then I'm going to try and go ahead and um, accumulate as many stitches <clears throat> on this rough edge as I did on this rough edge. So um, you can see, I mean, in some cases they're a little bit closer, like this one was a really close one. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, um, we just want to be, like I said, it'd be nice to be equivalent to on each side. Um, if I'm within a stitch or two, like I say, I uh, roll with the punches and um, and just keep on, just keep on moving with my border. So um, I'm going to keep crocheting on camera here until we get around. I'll show you that life is not easy here. I'm wandering in the borders. Still using this yarn. Um, and we'll clean up that tail later. I just, like I said, just want to make sure I'm getting over it so that it's hidden in there. It's a tough one. I try to get in a stitch versus going in a big gaping hole just because um, it kind of hides it a little bit. It looks like it's embedded a little bit more. Um, for me, it just, I don't know, it just looks nicer. And like I said, your your piece of work, you can do whatever you'd like, however you, however you want to see it visually when you're done. That's what counts. So there we have both those sides done. Um, and then we're going to round this final corner. So we're going to insert and do a single with a chain and one more single. And then we can finally bang out this last little bit on top. Super tight one there. Now, once you get to the end of uh, your chains, your yellow, if you will, the, the first color, um, and if you wanted to tie off here, you certainly could. So if you wanted to tie off here, you completed that last stitch right there, all you would do is slip stitch into this first V that you see right here. So this is your first actual stitch. This is what's gonna kind of pull it all together. You would literally just well either way you're gonna have to you're gonna have to slip stitch into it um you're gonna slip stitch which means you're gonna pull your yarn through and then you're gonna pull your yarn through so you still only have one um, loop on your crochet hook so essentially if you wanted to be done right now you could take your scissor you could cut off your yarn and you could weave your ends in and that's your done thing if you're i don't know feeling ambitious because you only have this little bit of yarn left and you want to burn it up um, you could go ahead and chain up one and beginning in the same um, the same stitch that you just slipped in, slip stitched into is where you want to begin another row. 
So it's a little confusing, I know, um, but essentially, let me go back and, and show you that again, is if I know I'm going to slip stitch into this stitch, pull through to connect, pull through to connect, and I'm going to go on, I'm just going to chain up one, and I'm going to go back into that stitch and put an actual single crochet in there. And all that's doing is it's just, it's again, it's your step up. It's your little ladder to get to row, the next row. And then you're starting off with a single crochet that, that is starting that second row of your border. So if you wanted to do that, then you could keep moving along here as I'm doing, um, just going ahead and single crocheting in. And I wanted to do just a little bit. Um, I'm only going to do one row just because I'm working on another project. Well, actually, I could probably get this done. But it just kind of looks, I don't know, a little bit more defined if you just get one extra nice little thicker solid row on there versus just having that one. So like I said, you do another one, it gets even thicker. I mean, it's just, it's all about your preference. And you can put them in and you can go, nope, too much. So, or you could even do a third color. You could do a nice, I don't know, a different color. Um, and so you could add a color to where um, this one stopped and you could do a second. So there's options for you there. But uh, essentially that is that is the gist to adding a single crochet border um, with that one little tidbit on slip stitching, chain one and single crochet back into that hole that you slip stitched in. That's how you're going to build up to a second row to start your second row border. So that is all I have for you today. I'm going to go ahead and finish off my my second row, I think, here of my of my country blue. And uh, I'll go ahead and post a picture of my, my finished product. I hope you share yours. I'd like to see what you guys are up to. I'd like to know somebody's learning something from this. And I hope you enjoy using your clogs. I love mine. Take care. Talk to you soon.